Well, tubers, I've got to uh, get ready and start tearing a uh, Volkswagen engine apart. I've got a little uh, single port here, but it uh, seems to be a good case. We're going to use that to uh, rebuild one. I've got some parts on order, but uh, first things uh, first things first. We got to get a fire going. I need to clean out my my stove here. It's uh, full of ash. So uh, once I get all the uh, cleaned out and dumped here we'll start uh, we'll start tearing this little engine apart all right gang what we're doing here I've got uh, I'm draining the oil right now and what I got to do is strip this whole engine I need to get the the generator off of it the carb fuel pump intake uh, going to be pulling the heads I'm gonna get this thing all the way down to the short block uh, one thing I want to do before I do all the rest of that is just check the in play I'm gonna get this belt off here to make sure my I don't have any resistance and I'm, uh, my crank will float back and forth the way it's supposed to. And I, that's just to check the general health of the engine. Uh, when these things get really worn out, you'll have a lot of slop in your end plate. And I just want to check that just for my own, uh, just so I'll know. I'm going to get this uh, generator pulley apart here. And you want to make sure you save all your shims if you're going to use a this type. They've got a new serpentine system like uh, the one I put on my dad's 1914. They work with a series of shims that allow the front part of the pulley to go in and out. You know, if you take shims out of here, it's going to let the pulley go back farther and tighten the belt. A uh, bit of a primitive, a primitive system, you know, by I guess what you'd refer to as normal cars, but you want to save all these unless you're going with a serpentine type system. All right, we're going to pop this uh, clutch and pressure plate off. Now we got a pretty good clutch and pressure plate, anyway. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set up for measuring the end plate here real quick. I'm going to get a little bit of uh, get this grease and stuff off here so I have a good place for my dial indicator to land at. Alright guys, I was going to show you my little setup here on the, you know, measuring this end plate. I just took a piece of angle iron and drilled a hole through it. And uh, you can see there, I mounted my dial indicator on that piece of angle iron. I got a couple of uh, magnets off stereo speakers. That holds me still. That holds that dial indicator still to where I can uh, measure this end plate. Let's check it out real quick. I'll try to position the camera to where you can see what I'm doing, but well, really what's happening here, what's happening, I'm just taking a uh, long screwdriver between the flywheel and the case, and you pry back, okay, and to check it on the other side, you just go in between this pulley and the case, and you pry back, and that, that moves that you're checking the float limit in play if you will on that uh, crankshaft and on this engine the limits are like uh, uh, three to five thousandths with a limit of six thousandths on in play actually it's two two point seven to five with a limit of six let's let's check it out and see what we got all right I'm uh, I'm zoomed in on my dial indicator here so you can see it Okay, we're at, we're at zero right there. Okay, I'm gonna go to the front, pry back. You can see I'm right at eight thousandths. That's no good. It's no good. That means this uh, bottom end's definitely got to be rebuilt. So I expected it. I expected it. they get tired, you know, after a while. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is just start tearing the motor down. I got to get all the everything off of it. So we'll uh, we'll do that. Got, now we're ready to uh, we're ready to get this generator off here. I need this back plate. I'm going to put an alternator on this engine, but uh, I need this back plate here. I'm going to be using this doghouse 
Uh, I'm gonna be, they've got these plugged off right now. You can use like freeze plugs and put in here and then pop rivet to block these off, but normally these are used to push air through your uh, heat exchangers. I'm gonna be using those. It gets cold here in the winter time and I like as much heat as I can get. I'm gonna go ahead and get this, uh, got all the intake bolts loose. Got the intake and carb off of it there. Uh, I'll get that carb off later and try to clean those parts up a little bit and put them in my uh, pile of uh, just various parts that I keep. And we're gonna we're gonna get this old fuel pump off here. Uh, pretty decent pump. It was working really working fine, you know, when I was running this engine. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and keep it just in case I normally use uh, electric fuel pumps but uh, you never know you never know you can see it's fairly fairly clean I'm gonna clean that up and and hang on to that you want to hang on to all your nuts bolts screws whatever I use them all the time there's your your pump rod and sometimes these little old fiber fiber guys they get hung up and it's a guide <clears throat> it goes down in the case I'm gonna try to get this one out of here but uh, they sure can be a they sure can be a problem they'll break off right underneath this plate I might be able to just tap around on it really easy and maybe use a scraper to get up under it and lift it but I've had them I've had them break off in the case before and it's uh, to me it was just a you know weak point in the design but uh, we'll see if we can wake him up here there he's seems like he's yeah there we go got it out of there yeah they make an adapter that you can put on here if you're not using if you're not using the manual fuel pump you can uh, you can put that adapter on there and it'll 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 uh, serve as a vent for your crankcase. Alright guys, we've got the old uh, standoff here. We'll uh, put this back and get it all cleaned up. Now what I'm going to do is get these uh, cooling pins off and it's just a matter let me kind of loosen the uh, loosen the camera up here and change the position to where you can see you've got just screws around it screws in the head here and here um, want to get all those uh, get all those uh, screws loose and pull these tins off here let's go ahead and get this tin off here got all the screws out of it there's the old uh, the old grimy tin. Uh, there you have it. Naked single port, I guess you could say. You can see all the the nastiness that's been collected. That kind of stuff, if it gets in around your head down in here, uh, in these fins, it's going to cause an overheating problem. Let me show you a case in point right here see this all this around this side of this cylinder no good that's no good that that kind of stuff right there will uh, will cause you to overheat it's uh, good to keep your engine compartment as clean as you can because all that came from drawing air through the uh, the intake on the doghouse and blowing it down on the cylinders and you know with these things it's they're, they're <laughs> I've seen them stored I've pulled Volkswagens out of barns you know when I'm doing a project or something pull it out of a barn and there will be mice will build nests up in here so it's good if you're not familiar with your engine and it's been a, a while you know if you're buying a project or whatever check it out you don't want to burn an engine up for for no reason you know it could have been a decent engine when it was parked or wrecked or whatever but after it sits a year, two years, seven years, whatever, in a barn, mice will crawl up in here and build nests up under those uh, those uh, 
cooling tins, just a tip. 